the world just witnessed a move no one in Washington expected. Beijing has drawn a line in the silicon sand. In a sudden and sweeping directive, China has told every one of its tech companies to stop purchasing American-made semiconductors. Overnight, the steady flow of U.S. chips that powered China's enormous technology industry came to an abrupt halt. Factories paused orders, suppliers froze shipments, and financial markets began to tremble. Inside Washington, alarm bells went off. Reports suggest that Scott Besant, the Wall Street veteran turned Treasury Secretary, was blindsided. The man once celebrated as a market genius is now facing a storm that even he didn't see coming. And at the center of it all stands Donald Trump. His administration believed it had outsmarted Beijing with what seemed like a perfect deal. The U.S. had just relaxed export rules to allow NVIDIA, the crown jewel of America's AI boom, to sell a new line of processors to China. These weren't just any processors, they were the H20, custom engineered to comply with U.S. restrictions while still feeding China's enormous hunger for artificial intelligence hardware. To Trump's team, it looked like a strategic win-win. China would buy billions worth of chips, NVIDIA would profit handsomely, and the U.S. Treasury would take a 15% tax from every sale, turning geopolitical control into revenue. But Beijing had a different playbook. Instead of signing the contracts, it shut the door hard. President Xi Jinping's government reportedly issued internal guidance instructing Chinese companies not just to avoid NVIDIA's new H20, but also to cancel pending orders from other major U.S. chipmakers like AMD. Within days, the two biggest semiconductor suppliers in the world were effectively locked out of the Chinese market. Then came the next step, a government-wide rule prohibiting American chips from being used in publicly funded projects. The message to Washington was unmistakable. China is no longer playing by American rules. This wasn't about the technical specs of the H-20 or how many teraflops it could push. It was about sovereignty, about refusing to be dependent on a rival's technology. For Beijing, this was a statement of independence, a rejection of decades of economic pressure and technological containment. And suddenly, what Washington once framed as a clever trap looks like a self-inflicted wound. To understand this moment, we have to step back. What's happening now is the result of more than a decade of policy choices, decisions that were supposed to slow China's rise in technology, but instead accelerated it. Since the early 2010s, Washington has tried to keep China out of the world's most advanced semiconductor supply chains. The logic was simple. If China couldn't access cutting-edge processors, its progress in critical fields like artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and advanced manufacturing would stall. And so, the United States tightened export controls, restricted chip-making tools, and pressured allies in Europe and East Asia to do the same. On paper, this looked like a winning strategy. But while Washington was building walls, Beijing was building factories. China responded with one of the most ambitious industrial pushes in modern history. It invested tens of billions of dollars to nurture a domestic semiconductor ecosystem, from chip design and fabrication to packaging and lithography. Cities like Shenzhen, Wuhan, and Shanghai became hubs of new semiconductor research parks. Universities opened new departments focused on microelectronics. Thousands of engineers were trained in fields once dominated by Silicon Valley and Taiwan's TSMC. Progress was slow at first. Early chips lagged behind U.S. designs by years. But the gap began to close faster than anyone predicted. Analysts who once said China would need a decade to catch up began revising their estimates downward, to five years, then three. This was supposed to be a warning sign. Yet Washington kept tightening controls, assuming China would remain technologically dependent. Then came the trade war. When Donald Trump launched his trade offensive against Beijing, tariffs, sanctions, and new export restrictions came in waves. The aim was clear, weaken China's industrial base and force it to negotiate from a position of vulnerability. But instead of collapsing, 
China dug in. The trade war became a national rallying cry, a mission to achieve technological self-sufficiency. Beijing poured even more resources into domestic R&D. Private and state-owned companies alike began re-engineering supply chains from scratch. Every U.S. restriction was treated not as a setback, but as motivation to innovate faster. When Washington blocked Huawei's access to advanced chips, Chinese researchers found new ways to optimize software and hardware integration. When the U.S. banned the sale of critical semiconductor equipment, domestic firms started producing alternatives, sometimes with surprising success. Within a few years, what was once a long-term aspiration became an urgent reality. China's chip industry evolved from imitation to innovation. Ironically, it was Washington's own pressure that created this momentum. Fast forward to 2024. After years of friction, the U.S. realized that its own tech giants were bleeding. NVIDIA, Qualcomm, and Intel, three of the largest semiconductor firms in the world, had lost access to their biggest customers. NVIDIA alone had seen billions in potential sales evaporate after restrictions on its flagship A100 and H100 GPUs. Qualcomm, whose processors power most Android smartphones, relied heavily on Chinese brands like Xiaomi and Vivo for more than 60% of its revenue. Even Intel, long considered untouchable, was struggling to maintain demand from Chinese data centers. To stop the bleeding, Trump's administration unveiled a workaround, NVIDIA's H20 chip, a modified processor stripped of certain high-performance functions so it could legally be sold to China under export compliance rules. It was presented as a masterstroke. China gets access to semi-advanced chips, American companies make money, and the U.S. government earns tax revenue on every deal. But Beijing saw through it immediately. To Chinese policymakers, the offer wasn't cooperation. It was condescension. They were being asked to pay for watered-down technology while their purchases were taxed by the very country that imposed the restrictions in the first place. So they refused. In an almost theatrical reversal, Beijing told domestic companies to cancel orders for the H20 and any similar chips. The timing couldn't have been more symbolic, just weeks after China unveiled its own high-performance AI model known as DeepSeek. DeepSeek's release sent shockwaves through the global tech industry because it demonstrated that China's software and hardware were finally capable of standing on their own. The U.S. narrative that China couldn't innovate without American chips, no longer held. Beijing didn't just reject a chip, it rejected an entire framework of dependence. For years, the United States used access to advanced technology as leverage, a tool of economic diplomacy and power projection. But China's move shows that leverage may be slipping away. By halting U.S. chip purchases, Beijing is signaling to both domestic industries and global partners that it's ready to walk its own path. The policy shift is as much psychological as it is economic. It tells Chinese engineers, entrepreneurs, and manufacturers that the future will be built on self-reliance, not Western supply chains. The broader message to the world is even louder. If China can survive, and even thrive, without U.S. semiconductors, so can others. For U.S. chip makers, the implications are staggering. Consider NVIDIA. In 2022, nearly a quarter of its data center revenue came from China, a market worth billions in annual sales. Analysts estimate that smooth access to China could have boosted NVIDIA's revenues by up to $15 billion. Now that market is evaporating. Qualcomm is even more exposed. Chinese smartphone manufacturers accounted for 64% of its total revenue in 2023. Without them, Qualcomm's research and development pipeline, the engine that keeps it competitive, faces funding shortfalls. Intel and AMD are in similar positions. Their high-end CPUs and GPUs are used in everything from Chinese supercomputers to electric vehicles. Losing access to that demand doesn't just hurt profits, it disrupts global production cycles. And then there's Apple. 
Though not a semiconductor company, Apple is deeply entangled in China's ecosystem. Nearly 19% of its global revenue comes from Greater China, and most of its manufacturing happens there. If Beijing tightens restrictions or retaliates economically, Apple could face double damage, slower sales, and production bottlenecks. Even companies outside hardware, like Microsoft and Tesla, depend heavily on Chinese operations. Microsoft runs joint ventures for its Azure cloud services, while Tesla's Shanghai Gigafactory remains one of its most productive plants worldwide. The result is clear. The world's biggest tech firms are discovering just how indispensable China's market truly is. This puts the U.S. Treasury and Scott Besant in a bind. As Treasury Secretary, Besson's job is to stabilize America's finances. Yet he's watching billions in corporate revenue vanish as Chinese firms walk away from U.S. suppliers. The ripple effects extend to Wall Street, pension funds, and the broader economy. Reports suggest Besson is privately urging caution, even exploring quiet diplomatic channels to ease tensions. But trust, once broken, is hard to rebuild. Beijing's decision isn't a negotiating tactic. It's a turning point. Even if temporary deals resume, Chinese companies are unlikely to place their long-term bets on American technology again. The consequence? A slow but irreversible decoupling of global tech supply chains. You know, semiconductors are really the brains behind everything modern, from smartphones and cloud servers to medical devices and fighter jets. They're not just components. They're actually the foundation of digital power. Now, if China successfully transitions to domestic or non-U.S. alternatives, the ripple effects could, well, redefine global influence. Software ecosystems, hardware standards, and intellectual property frameworks might begin to orient around Chinese, not American, technologies. For decades, the U.S. led the world in computing innovation, from Intel's microprocessors to NVIDIA's GPUs. That dominance became a pillar of its economic and military supremacy. But with one decisive move, Beijing is testing just how fragile that leadership really is. Other countries are watching closely. If China can break free, why not them? From India to Brazil, nations that once depended on Western hardware are exploring partnerships with Chinese suppliers. And you know, each shift chips away, no pun intended at Washington's technological leverage. Across American manufacturing, the impact is already visible. Factories that once relied on cheap, reliable imports from Asia are facing shortages, higher costs, and delays. Specialized machinery and precision parts, often sourced from Chinese suppliers, are, you know, just harder to find. Shipping costs have surged. Executives who once celebrated reshoring bringing jobs back to the United States, now admit that the process is a lot more complicated than slogans suggested. Many assembly lines are running below capacity, overtime is down, shifts are being cut, and smaller contractors are shutting down altogether. What was supposed to be a manufacturing revival is, honestly, turning into a survival struggle. And it doesn't stop with China. The United States trade strategy has strained relationships with key allies, too. European and Asian partners are, well, growing uneasy with Washington's unpredictable policies, from sudden tariff threats to shifting export bans. Many are now looking for ways to diversify trade without relying solely on American systems. New regional alliances, digital payment networks, and cross-border industrial projects are quietly being built, often with China playing a central role. The long-term risk for the United States isn't just economic loss, it's strategic irrelevance. If the global trade architecture evolves without American leadership, Washington's ability to shape rules and standards could honestly fade for good. So here we are. Two global powers locked in a technological chess match where every move reshapes the future of innovation. Washington wanted to corner China. Instead, it may have pushed Beijing to become self-sufficient faster than ever. The United States still leads in many areas. Chip design software, 
quantum research and advanced lithography. But the margins are narrowing. Meanwhile, China's determination to reduce foreign dependence has turned what once seemed like an impossible dream into a national priority. This is no longer a question of trade policy or corporate earnings. It's a question of who sets the rules for the digital age. And as factories hum in Shenzhen, and American executives scramble for new markets, one truth is becoming impossible to ignore. The balance of technological power is shifting, quietly but decisively. In the end, this isn't just about semiconductors. It's about strategy, pride, and the struggle for control in a world where technology defines strength. China's message is simple but profound. It refuses to build its future on someone else's terms. For the United States, the challenge is equally clear. Adapt, collaborate, or risk losing the very dominance that once seemed unshakable. Because in this new era of global competition, the next superpower won't just control land, armies, or oil. It will control the chips that make everything else possible. And right now, that race is, well, far from over.